in practice, you would want to use the little widget down here if you're using the whole sales pack setup, which should work nicely if you were running the practice problem in real time. But we're going to actually generate a check to record the transaction in our practice problem. So let's go up top. I'll just hit the plus button and I might make uh, two checks to tie out to our practice problem uh, bank reconciliations because oftentimes when you pay sales tax, it'll be like a, uh, a state tax and then the city tax that you might have to pay. So I'm going to break that out because that's how our bank reconciliation is. City tax, I'm just going to say California. I'm just making up the, the, the vendor here to make it somewhat generic that we are paying the sales tax. This being, you know, the government that we're paying whoever's, whoever's saying, hey, you got to give us protection money. This is how much you owe. So then down below, I'm just going to say this is going to go to that category, the sales tax category, which was the California Department of Tax and Fees. And I'm going to make one payment for the 1875.09. Where did I come up with that number? I came up with that number because I'm trying to tie out to my practice problem on the bank rec. So the sum of the two transactions that I make will tie out to our liability form. Uh, that we generated over here, which is which is not pulling up, but I'll go back to there in a second. And so there we have it. Okay, I fixed it now. So there it is. So that's that. And so now let's say save and new, because I'm going to make another check. Save and new. And I'm going to be. I'm going to say this is now the state. So I'm going to say this is going to the state uh, sales tax. California. I, I'm just making up a vendor here that we're going to pay uh, there. So that's that. Boom. Bam. Shakalaka. And so the check number populates and this is going to go once again to the California board, Calif California department and so on and whatever. So then I'm going to say this one is for 468.77 and I think the two of those checks should add up to this 234385 which we'll check out in a second so let's save and close that and see if that does indeed do what we expect so if I go back to the tab to the right and I go into my balance sheet and we run it then I can see the checking account should go down by those two checks clearly that should be something that happens. So if I go down, I've got all this stuff happening on the 28th. So it's kind of hard to see. But uh, the ones that I just made were here and the other one was there. So those two are in there. That looks good. Now note, they're in there as normal checks. If I use the check, the widget thing to make them, if I could do that, then it would show up kind of like a special check, kind of like a bill payment check or a payroll check, right? It'll give you that, that extra little special uh, thing that tells you, tells you that, which would be good. You want to use that if you're using the whole system within QuickBooks, but we can't do it real time as we explained. So I won't go into it in any detail here. So then if I look at the California Department of Sa blah, blah, and I go into that, then we can see once again that at the end of January, the end of January, we had the amount that we owed of 234385. And then we paid these two checks at the end of February. And if I pull up the trusty calculator to calculate those two checks, then it'll be. Four six uh, eight point seven seven plus one eight seven five point oh nine, and there's that two three two three four three eighty six that's paid off. So this amount, the five five three sixty nine, is what is is uh, is what is still due, and and we're gonna have to pay. That's what we collected in February that we're gonna have to pay at the end of March is the way we're setting up our system here in the practice problem. So if I go to the tab to the right, notice that, that the payment that we made ties out here to the liability. And if I if I run this report for March 020123 to 022823, run it, then we've got the 55370. That's what's going to be due uh, in March. So so this is what we 
collected in February that's going to be due in March. Now note another thing that people often get confused. It's confusing until you understand it. You're going to say, well, hey, I paid, I paid these taxes. They should be an expense on my income statement. That's, that was a lot of money. I should be able to deduct it on my income statement. Why isn't it here? We explained it before, but it's still a little bit confusing. And it's because neither the income when you collected the sales tax, nor the expense when you pay the sales tax is on the income statement. You can imagine a system where they did that, where you've recorded the income and then the expense of doing business. But then the implication would be that the expense was your expense. It's a business expense, but it's not in theory, a business expense. You're just the tool of the government. You're just the collector. It's not your income. It's not your expense. When we collect it, we're supposed to put it on the balance sheet because in theory, it's a tax applied directly to the client you know, or the customer, right? Not to you, you're just the middle, you're just a collection person. Therefore the accounts payable goes up with the sales receipt or the invoice. And then it goes down when you make the payment, neither income or expense hits the income statement. So that's the, uh, that's the general idea.